Welcome back to your favorite weekly sports show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is ITC Sports Ball. And of course, I am your man, Jerome Spann. You know, the prettiest on, on ITC, baby. <laughs> you see me, baby. You see me. Thank you, of course, for watching us on YouTube. And all of you that are joining us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, we really do appreciate you coming in each and every week with us. But of course, we have got the super spicy crew with us. Of course, we've got that hot take spitter, that man who rips like that line spits, the star of the show. And if you like fishing grits and all that hot shit, let me hear you say, oh, yeah, you're. it's your boy, Mace. I'm ready to go. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And of course, we have that number one troll around here. That dude who says, oh, you're a little fired up about that? Let me throw some gasoline on your fire. Get it raging, baby. He is that man. Daryl. Ten bucks a gallon. All that gasoline. (laughs) 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 Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, we are back to you this week with another spicy episode. Be on the look. We are going to have some more interviews coming up for the Land of Many series, just setting up the dates. And I will let you guys know when those are. We're also going to have some more interviews coming up with some more artists along the lines and just bringing them on here, having a good time and working out a date to bring in our, our guy, Will, since he didn't get the chance to join us for our post draft show. So we're working on that. We're going to do that more towards football time because Will is a great football mind. But we have to start this week with them NBA playoffs. And again, this week, Mace, we have to do it again. We have to lay out for Daryl and give him his moment in the sun real quick because this nigga was right again. Daryl, take your lap. Warriors, congratulate yourselves. Making this fool think you're going to lose. It's all good. Keep on them slow claps. No. 2-0, baby. 2-0. That's all. I got, got Steph Curry's nuts in your mouth over there, or what? <laughs> <laughs> what you eating Boy. on over there? <laughs> I got gummies. I'm just eating some gummies right now. Leave me alone. But um, <laughs> we were we were both we we both fell into the trap of. I you know what you know what it is, man. I think it it's that trap of um, seeing a, thinking the team is going to make. Is going to have an easy time making it back to the finals just because, I mean, we literally saw LeBron and the Warriors do it for 10 years. So I think we fell into the trap of if they made it, they, I mean, unless something catastrophic happens, they're going to make it again. So I, I think that's what, what, especially myself, that's kind of where I kind of load myself to sleep at uh, in these playoffs and not taking into account, I mean, just how hot the Celtics are. Um, um, hey, man, Tatum, Tatum is unstoppable at this moment, and that team has finally is finally looking like all that drafting and team continuity, not trading pieces and all that stuff, is finally starting to pay off. Because I've been saying it for years that uh, for the Celtics to get better, that either Tatum or Brown has to go. I think that's something that we both actually discussed during the offseason was that we didn't think that this team was going to get over the hump, right? We thought that something had to be shaken up in order to make it work, and they have proven us wrong. They said, oh, y'all think we ain't got it? Hold my beer real quick, baby. And they have, without a shadow of a doubt, Jason Tatum has taken the next step into being a superstar. I know some may want to hesitate and say, well, we got to wait to see what happens. Nah, 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 man. Look, he took out Kevin Durant. And Kyrie in the first round. And then, yes, I know Giannis was missing Middleton. And I will tell you to the day is over, right, that they would have, the Bucks would have won that series if they had Middleton. But they didn't. And Tatum balled out regardless, right? So Tatum balled out against the defending champions, got them up out the paint. And now in the conference finals, is looking like they're ready to get Miami up out the paint. Because, look, as much as um, Heat fans want to feel good about what happened in game one, game two should have y'all boys nervous. Y'all needed to hold court at home. You had to. You had to. Boston did what they needed to. They got their one game at home, on the road, excuse me, and now they're going back home. And if they defend home court, 
I'm telling you right now, Miami will be going back, going out in game six. Cause I'm not, I'm not gonna say they're gonna lose back at home, right at game five. But game six back at the at Boston, oh yeah, they'll be about to paint. So, so these next two games are huge. I, one thing, one thing that I think that we we need to do is um so where where do you where how do you view Jimmy Butler? Because he's one of those players that that in the playoffs is markedly better than he is in the regular season. He's, is it is it is it a case of okay he kind of 75 percents it during the season he turns it on when he has to for a, a week or two and then kind of cruises and then gets to the playoffs and now he's superstar jimmy butler so in my eyes i view jimmy butler as he's like the 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 like the cutoff line for a superstar in the league right like if we were doing if we listed off everybody he would probably be if not the last guy in that line, second to last, you know, of true superstars, because the true superstars in this league, as you just discussed with Jimmy, step it up in the playoffs. They go crazy. Look, whatever they and, and this goes back to a paper I wrote over 10 years ago, right? About why I didn't view Kobe Bryant as um, and when we're talking in the in terms of the all-time greats, like the elite of the elite, it's why I didn't put him towards the front like everybody else because when you actually view things in context the superstars like the true superstars their numbers do this in the playoffs right they either maintain what they are doing and in, in the regular season or at least two out of three of their um most important statistical categories they improve in right because there are some examples like charles barkley right his scoring goes down a little bit in the playoffs right but his rebounds his steals his blocks and assists all go up in the playoffs. So it's like, okay, yeah, he may be scoring less a little, like, cause I think it's like four or five points less a game, but he's also contributing more in these other areas. So all the superstars, when you look over history, that's what they do. That's what Jimmy Butler does. His core statistics go up as soon as they get in the playoffs, he turns it up. Um, how sustainable is that? Cause I know that's more so what you're getting to, right? It's like how, how great is this? How, how sustainable is what he's trying to do? Can you win a championship? A lot has to shake right for you. This is very similar to the situation with Kawhi in Toronto, to where they have one guy who they know can go get them a bucket if they need it, right? They Jimmy, for all his faults, he can go get you a goddamn bucket if you need it, okay? So they have that guy. Now it depends on who's – can Bam Adebayo be Pascal Siakam for him? Right, yeah, because Siakam was going crazy in that playoffs. Can can um, Tyler Hero be Kyle Lowry? You know what I mean? He needs stuff. It, you need stuff like that to shake out in order for it to work for you. Because at the end of the day, this has maintained truth throughout the majority of time in the NBA. Usually, whoever has the best player wins. Normally, like it, most of the time. And when a seven game series, if you got that dude, you probably gonna win the series. Look at um, look at the two championships that Kobe Bryant won after Shaq. Who was the best player in both of those series? Then when they won? markedly Kobe, it was Kobe by a wide margin. He didn't play the best, but if you took the overall context of who's the best player, it was Kobe. And you know, I don't even you know, I don't rock with that man like that, dog. But that's the truth. Yes, yeah. Paul Gasol played better than him in those finals. That may have had something to do with you know um, matchups and stuff. But again, overall, best player is Kobe Bryant. That's usually who wins. So I think I don't know. Do you believe that they can win a championship right now with how this roster is constituted? Because I, I, I don't know. I still have questions because I don't. I don't, know I don't if they're think gonna beat Boston. Tyler Hero is consistent enough. I think he he's the X factor for that team because he gives them a guy that can stretch the floor for one. Um, he's dynamic in scoring. Um, it's kind of like the hype man. You, we we know Jimmy's gonna carry the Jimmy going whether the engine is running in that team or not. Jimmy going Jimmy going drag the team to the end of the game. Mm -hmm. But if nobody if nobody's in the car turning that bad boy on and steering, then I mean they're not going anywhere. I don't disagree, Daryl. Do you feel like uh, the Heat have enough to try and overcome this Boston team at this point? We've seen how red hot Jason Tatum, 
uh, Jalen Brown and the entire Boston team has been. We've seen Al Horford playing some of the best basketball that he's played in his career in the playoffs. For a guy who's been historically a good playoff player, he is balling out of fucking control right now. So, Daryl, do you think that Miami has enough to knock them off? Or is it or is it what we called in the first round after uh, Brooklyn lost to the Celtics, which was a change of the guard? If you, if you believe in a David and Goliath uh, story, and that's that's what this is, honestly, because if the Heat blows out Celtics, right, mm-hmm. like they just they just win the series, they're gonna look they're gonna have like the amazing story going into their into the finals. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what the story will be, honestly, because if you if you like these like with the finals and the and stuff like how the stories come up, it's like. What was last year? It was like the Bucks, the Bucks story. It's like, oh, they, Giannis did it, staying on his own team. Everything it just it fit perfectly. If the Heat, if the Heat can do the same thing, knock off mm-hmm. Celtics, that that'd be that same story. But if the Celtics is like, they supposed to, <laughs> that's all you get. You get like, you supposed to win this. Like you're not, you're not supposed to have no downfall. In it. It's just gonna that's go fair. like, okay. It's about Celtic. time. It's about time for the Celtics to win another championship. I mean, when you when you look at it, whoa, 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 whoa! whoa, whoa. I, I, I hate them. I hate them. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Listen, 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 listen. I hate no. them, but I mean, no. LA got one. It's time for the Celtics. No, it's just, that's I, just I, how. No, that's not. just how. That's no. just how basketball. That's just no. how the basketball guys work. Bro. No, I don't sir. like it. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Since the '80s. Them dudes got one championship. They don't need no more. It's time for they can, listen, they can bro. I don't. Nope, I don't nope. make the rules. I don't make the rules. <laughs> the rest you. make. You're right. I just, You're right. I'm just here. Do. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Okay. And, nah, and, bro. And hey, man. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. We're not gonna do that. We're we're not gonna give these Celtics. I'm not giving them chance. shit. You know how hard it is to <laughs> to look at the Celtics and be like, oh, they're good. <laughs> Here you go about the about the wish and injuries. In Here he goes. The Celtics being good just kind of uh, just makes my stomach hurt. You know when you got to take a shit but you can't, your stomach just hurts. That's how I feel about the Celtics <laughs> being good. I fucking hate them, but Tatum is so fucking good. I fucking hate it. It's the oh. worst. Would you put your money on them? I'm not putting shit on the Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have to sit. I'm gonna just have to sit back and be a fucking Scrooge this entire playoffs if the Celtics end up making the finals and making it a competitive series. If they fucking win, I might have to take a hiatus for a week because I don't know if I can be on that show. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna have to have somebody fill in for me because I can't be a part of that. Oh no! <laughs> oh no, bro! Oh my you, god! Celtics, Celtics wins. This, wins. Lights red the whole show. Whole fucking show. <laughs> if I see some green, hey, you, you see that that green plant in the in your background? We're gonna have to throw that out. Ain't nothing green. <laughs> we ain't gonna have nothing green anywhere. If the Celtics <laughs> mess around and win, I promise oh, you, no. I'm, I'm going outside. I'm painting all the trees purple and gold. I'm, I'm going all out. I, I hate it. And you gonna put the green. green. Num- you putting I'm the Westbrook out. number on the tree? Westbrook number on the tree? <laughs> <laughs> Man, what, he, bro, this, 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 this is not about Westbrook. Leave him out of this. I hate his fucking guts. <laughs> I don't, man. You, you, man, I don't. I can't. Even, I can't even play like that. I, I, I have enjoyed no. Russell Westbrook just from afar, just not on my team. I don't want to enjoy him on my team. I enjoy him from afar, but um, <laughs> composed myself. Um, <clears throat> but switching over to the um, Golden State and Dallas series. Um, like I said, Dallas was another team we didn't think was gonna make it, but um, Luca just kind of made it happen. There's really no other way around it. I mean. I think Spencer. No, nah, hold on, hold on, hold on. We gonna call it what it was. The Suns shit the bed, dog. They pulled an Amber two, Heard two games in a they, row. They pulled an Amber Heard two games in a row. They was like eh, in the bed, dog. Like gross. And speaking of Amber Heard, hold on. Let's touch on this right now. We will get right back to these playoffs. Hold on, players. Now look, we didn't talk about Jada. 
Okay, if you want a wife like that, <laughs> you want a wife like Amber Heard? This bitch over here pooping <laughs> in the bed. She's pooping in the bed. And then Bro, she's I... sitting there telling lies on the man's name, trying to make you into a domestic violence dude. And she the one over here beating your ass? Talking about some, <laughs> oh, I didn't, I did what, what, what was it, her exact quote? Oh, I didn't uh, sock you, Johnny. I hit I... you. Bitch, it's the same what you thing. Mean? What the fuck are you talking about? I'll sock you out. <laughs> what, bitch, what are you talking about? It's the same shit. Yo. So I gotta ask, fellas, y'all want a woman like Amber Heard? If if I if I keep on saying pledge instead of donate over and over again, trying to avoid the question. <laughs> yo, um, <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Sure, I, I sure I want something horrible like that. <laughs> Look, you just I'm got just caught. Saying. So, I'm so who, okay, so who we gonna we gonna we gonna break this down for for the listeners and the viewers right now? Amber Heard or Jada? Who you take? Drew? Who you who you who's your wife? Ooh, who's your wife? You Amber gotta pick one. Jada. You gotta uh, pick one. I take I take that's, Amber. That, that's a hard one. You gotta I'll pick one, bro. I take I take Amber. I might have to take a knife cut to my finger. But she ain't gonna embarrass me in public like that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah I, I think I'm with I'm with Daryl on this though. I think I gotta go Amber Heard because at least all of my business ain't in the streets. Then, like <laughs> she, like Jada, put all your business in the streets, dog. I can't, I can't live that way. A oh, little no, bit bro, of this, just, this stuff. You, imagine waking up to a to a fucking pile of shit one morning. <laughs> No, no, I agree. With that. I agree. You, yeah, you're right. I understand that, but at the same time, but that's better than your life. And her know that situation happened, and it's not in the public. Seriously, we're just finding out this in 2022. This shit was happening back over in 15, 16, 17. Exactly. <laughs> Think about this. We have had a blow for blow on Will's relationship for the past. I don't know, 10, 12 years at this point. Ever since you started no. that red table talk. Oh, we didn't no. we didn't heard all the dirt. I'm just saying, I would rather have to go to court and deal with a crazy bitch like Amber Heard than to have to deal with this woman destroying my life and making me depressed because she hates the fact that I'm not Tupac. I'm sorry, dog. Like I can't do that. Like Sorry, I'm not Tupac. I'll never be Tupac. I can't do that for you, baby. So you got to love me for me. I can't look. Mace, when I found out she was crying at her own wedding because she didn't want to get married, fam, I'm out. I'm out. I don't care how fine you are. You could be the finest woman on the face of the planet. You could be Holly Berry fine your whole life. You can keep your crazy ass over there. I'm cool. You, you, missed, you missed it. He should be fine on the streets. There we go. On the streets. You know? Fine on the hey, streets. <laughs> hey, look, I'm gonna say it for real, for real. And Will, don't get mad at me if you ever see this, because I really like you. We she fuck with you, streets. Will. <laughs> she for the streets, brother. We fuck with you, Will. She for the streets, though. So I'm sorry. Uh, no, nah, I'm taking. Uh, I'm taking Amber. Mace, you gonna take Jada? Uh, bro, I don't know, dog. At this point, no, I you gotta make a choice. We made a choice. You okay. gotta make a choice. He say J. He say Jada right now. I'm walking. <laughs> walking oh, man you know what you know what dog you know what dog i think i'm gonna have to go amber bro because yeah, see, uh, you uh, uh. <laughs> you're talking about it now you're about it deal I, I can deal with the shit at home and then go out and be myself or i can let every everybody know that i'm with a crazy bitch and i'm stuck exactly Exactly. That's what I'm saying, dog. Now nah, I'm cool on that. Because because <laughs> if Will if Will give up on the relationship, it's his fucking fault. You know what I'm saying? He stayed all this time. If he give up now, so hey, if he give up now, I'm gonna call that brother smart. Deuce out, my bro, my boy. Look, go get some happiness. There is women that will not hate the fact that they are marrying you and not marrying Tupac. There's plenty of them out there that will treat you great just because you Will Smith, bro. Just because they're like, oh shit, I get to marry this fine brother Will Smith, who going through, who got a good life, cool. But nah, dog, never in my life would I deal with that Jada dog. Listen, listen to me, listen to me, Mason. I would rather wear a Packers jersey for a whole fucking year than to ever have a woman like Jada. No, Packers jersey and a fan of Conor McGregor like he is. Oh yeah, yeah. I 
Bob uh, have a Conor McGregor hat and a, and a Packers jersey. Wait, on, wait, wait. Dude. And let's add, add some more to that. And he's a representation to Kobe. That one. Hey, too. I'm, boy, I'm telling you, have on a 24 <laughs> armband and everything, dog. Like, I'm telling you, I'd rather do all of that than have one like that. You, no, I'm straight. Oh, so what they say? Give, give me Jada or give me death, nigga. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. So, are we talking guillotine or electric yeah, chair? How we doing this? How we doing this? Just let me know how we doing this so we can hurry this process up real quick. He rather be dragged, <laughs> dragged by a truck. <laughs> hey, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> whoa. He's got kind of bad images. We just go keep it moving <laughs> to the point of what we're talking about. Dallas most definitely capitalized on the opportunity there that the Suns left by shitting the bed. So, Mace, I have to ask you, we have given on this show, we've given Luca crap because his teams don't actually win a lot. This is really the first true winning that he's doing inside of the league, right? Do you feel like he has enough to potentially rally the team again and put and say, look, hey, get on my back. I got y'all boys. Given the opponent that he's going against, I don't think so. Simply because Golden, well, I mean, we 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 thought Phoenix was a, a well coached team, but the players just had to shit to bed. But I think Golden State, I don't think they, being out front in the manner that they are, I don't think that they will, they will shit to bed in the same fashion. Um, if it comes, if it comes down well, to, we seen them do it in the finals. So why can't they do it in the Western Conference Finals? Because I don't think Luca is at the level of LeBron was when he put the team on his back and and said, um, "I'm not losing." Hey, I, do I don't think I don't think this. Luca's there yet. I don't I do know if he can this. get there. All y'all motherfuckers trying to compare what Luca's done in his first three years to the great Michael Jeffrey Jordan. You better so go sit your little ass down and go talk to a fucking adult about some basketball because you clearly don't know shit. Because Michael Jordan was out there balling his ass off, and he he was the definition. Them first three years of Jordan was put the team on my back. So all y'all talking that shit, shut the hell up, shut up. Like I, I think I like I don't think Spencer Dimwitty has been the player that they thought they were gonna get. Um, he's not the Spencer Dimwitty that uh, kind of had Brooklyn afloat before he um, was traded to, um, what was it, uh, the Wizards, and then over to Dallas in the Porzingis uh, deal. I don't think he he hasn't been the same player um, since he's come back from injury. So um, I don't know if Dallas has enough to overcome just the um, – the continuity of, of Golden State. Um because I mean at, at this point, I think it's it's maybe gentlemen sweep. They'll probably they'll probably go back to Dallas and win game three, but um I don't see Dallas putting up much of a fight in this uh series just because Luther really can't do it by himself and he is a defensive liability out there for Whatever for whatever we talk about other superstars, they're not defensive liabilities unless they're James Harden. Hey, look, the Mavericks have been doing what the Warriors love to do with Steph, which is we're gonna put you on the worst player on the other team, and we're gonna let you guard that man, and we're gonna guard, we're gonna put our real defenders on everybody else because you can't guard nobody. So Lucas credit. Oh, well, go ahead. I was going to say, to Luca's credit, it's just simply he's balled out of control and he's gotten his team to this point with his performances. But, yeah, I think it's over with. I think that run is done. Golden State, even though they are not the same team that they were before as a championship team, having guys like Jordan Poole playing at the level that he's playing at has allowed where Steph and Clay aren't the absurdly elite shooters that we've never seen before percentage wise that they once were but having a guy like jordan Poole coming in and picking up the slack has helped them out a lot and somehow draymond not being able to actually shoot still hasn't bit them in the ass i don't know how this is just keeps happening but um 
I think that they're going, I think Golden State's going to win this series. And unfortunately, like Daryl had actually predicted at the beginning of the playoffs, which I fucking hate, that the Warriors are going to get into the into the NBA Finals and they have a legitimate shot at winning it. Because once they're there, they have a chance of winning. I mean, once so, they're there and you have a shooter, the likes of, <laughs> excuse me. Once they're there and you have the shooter of the likes of Steph, who for a week or so can just go red hot, mm -hmm. or Clay, even Clay for that matter. I mean, we've talked about how inconsistent he's been, but he can win them a game. We've seen him get red hot before. Yeah, he's I mean, like we've seen him many a times where all of I mean, a sudden even Clay even in this, down nine even in, in this even in this season we've seen even in this short period of time that he's been back we've seen it where he just gets hot and and he just can't miss so it's not mm -hmm. under it's not out of the realm of them doing it and I think in a seven game series you really run the risk of that happening at least one of them is going to get hot for a few games so yeah I I I, I don't know man I don't want to pick the Warriors to win. But damn, bro. It's like the way shit just keep falling. It's like, yo, they about to win another chip. I say this. And how does this look on Durant if uh, they go and win a championship with a lesser squad? Even even, even lesser than the, the 73 win team. You know what I'm saying? Like, that 73, that, that seemed like it was so long ago. Like, oh, everybody was babies. I don't think there's a knock on Durant. I don't, I you don't, don't think, you don't think so? Durant from them winning, retooling. Nick, they was terrible for two years in a row. Okay. And now they're right. finally yeah. getting back where they need to. They, they was awful for two years. Like, think about that first year without Durant. They were terrible. Okay? But do you, so, think, do you think if if the injuries don't happen and um, – Steph and Clay are actually like playing that they're like mid level. They still miss the playoffs, but they don't get those high draft picks and able to retool their team. Yep. You think that? Yeah. So I mean, hey, everything worked out well for them, I guess. And on top of that, their team wouldn't be. It wouldn't be the same right now. They if they kept Kevin Durant too at that, their team would be, KD, Steph, Clay. Draymond and a bunch of dudes on veteran minimum contracts. Yeah. Fortunately, right now they don't have to do that. They because really they're only, I think, because the only two max salaries they actually have are what Clay and Steph and Draymond yeah. is making under max, and they ready to ship his. And like you can tell, they, they. I think they've come to an understanding with Draymond where it's like, look, dog, we value you. We ain't about to pay you that fucking crazy money that you yeah. want. So. Uh, we'll see how that all shakes out, but yeah, they they've managed to get back to this level, which is insane to me. I, I don't know how you do that. Um, but we've talked about the teams that are have, you know, went on here. Now we have to talk about the teams that got themselves sent home and uh, gone fishing for the year. Mace, I know Milwaukee can always go back and say the Middleton injury did them in, but if we're being honest about this, Drew Holiday was awful this entire postseason terrible his play exponentially fell off a cliff at this point do they need to try and potentially get another option to be their true point guard like a drew holiday not a guy that can fill it up for you but at least a guy that can do the things that he does for you because man i definitely i awful. definitely think they need a playmaker or a creator i mean even if you get a guy that even let's just for what for however it shakes out they're still able to keep drew holiday and they can get a maybe a, a jordan clarkson out of some sort of deal some guy that can come off the bench and 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 give you some offense where mm -hmm. they wouldn't necessarily have it at times um and it, it's it's still crazy to me that how however good Giannis is, he doesn't he doesn't necessarily have a offensive repertoire to pull moves out of. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, I think they're in better shape to still be good, even if their roster doesn't change very much, just because there's still a whole lot of room for Giannis to get better as a player, offensively at least. So, um. But yeah, Drew Holiday really did play play bad. It, it's kind of crazy to me to think that he was the catalyst to them winning, and now he's the catalyst to them losing. 
Yep. We could talk about the Middleton injury all you want to, but Giannis just needed somebody to pull just to be consistent. Somebody. And and things would have been different. I believe it was like game three or game four where Giannis had like 40 something. And he dropped like one 40. Up, <laughs> one yeah. person. That's all he needed was one person on the team to step up and they would have won that game. But nobody stepped up. So yeah, I think it's a it's a bad situation for uh for Giannis at this point. You know, we you have to kind of you have to kind of hope that Middleton can come back and still be at a at a high level. And you gotta hope that you can get somebody to, re, to replace some of those minutes that Drew Holiday has given you because man, you can't look, even if you were injured this season, Drew Holiday, cool, bro. I never judge guys too harshly off of being injured, but you're also on the wrong side of 30. And if you're on the wrong side of 30 catching injuries now, like I'm a big fan of Drew Holiday. I've loved this dude since he came in the league. And you know why? 2K. I used to kill monkeys with Drew Holiday at 2K. <laughs> Boy. But hey, imagine this. I'm running a lineup where it's Drew Holiday at my point guard. I'm rocking uh Al Farouk Aminu at the uh two, KD at three, and then we have somebody like JaVel McGee at center. Boy, I was out there killing him. JaVale McGee. Hey, man, people people be hating on JaVale just because he ended up on Shackton. Shackton a fool a lot of times, but he I mean, he's a side. He, he knows what he's out there to do, and he does his job well. I, I, people people can give crap to JaVale McGee all they want to, but uh, my man has a role, and he plays it exceptionally. Look, you don't get to play this long in the league without being, a for one, a smart player. For two, an efficient player, and for three, a valued player. Okay, he's all three of those things. People want to knock him for a lot of the stuff we saw when he was in Washington, right? Because that's really where a lot of that Shackton stuff comes from. That's really from when Washington was the ultimate cesspool of if you go there, it's gonna be terror. You're gonna be terrible. You're you're like it doesn't matter how good you, the individual player, is. It was just a cesspool. When you're veteran on the, I will say this over and over. When your veteran on the team that's supposed to be teaching people how to do stuff is Andre Blatch. You are not going to succeed, okay? Okay? It's, it's just, it don't work. It does not work. So, yeah, but that, I think people really have knocked him unfairly throughout his career for what has happened there. But I will say this. If Milwaukee doesn't find somebody to come in and replace or potentially fill some of those minutes of Drew Holiday, they're going to be right back in the same situation next year. And yes, like I said, I believe that they could have beat Boston this year. But if Boston continues on to the NBA Finals, they're going to come back even better next year because they're going to have even more confidence. You don't want to play Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, all the boys with more confidence. I ain't going to say Marcus Smart because fuck that dude. I hate all his flopping. Okay, I hate that. Well, the fakest defensive player of the year ever. Nigga ain't even the best defender on his own team. How you win defensive player of the year? You need a Isn't he like the first guard to win defensive player of the year in like five, six years or something like that? Bro, it don't even make no sense that he won defensive player of the year. I think the last dude that won, the last guard that won it was like Tony Allen, I think. And oh, then shit. before, and then before that, I think it would have been, I think like MJ. Either, it wasn't it Gary Payton, maybe? But did he win Defensive Player of the Year? I thought he got yeah, he one. did. He did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, it would have been yeah before that it was Gary Payton, and then before that been MJ. But yeah, <laughs> y'all motherfuckers is out here trying to tell me Marcus Smart on the same is, level is a perimeter as a Gary defender. Payton, yeah. MJ, and Tony Allen, who we know was a certified dog on defense. Like man. Get the Get up my face, bro. <laughs> but um, so how how does how does this loss affect um Chris Paul and and Phoenix going forward though? Because for whatever reason, that team just did not rise to the occasion, and you have to start out with the leaders on the team, which would be Chris Paul and Devin Booker. Um. Let me start by saying 
fuck the Kardashians for messing with my man Booker's head before that and sabotaging us. Mates. I was about to say the fuck curse. Them. The curse. Fuck, fuck them the curse Kardashians. Y'all done curse my man Devin Booker now. Fuck y'all, man. Okay. But we're looking at it basketball wise. I think Chris Paul at this point, you cannot count on him to be there for you in the playoffs. You can't do it. You, you just can't. I understand, um, you know, you're really hoping that he could do that. But if y'all don't pay DeAndre Ayton and he, if y'all lose him, it's going to look a lot like one of them New Orleans teams with Chris Paul than it is what y'all done seen the past two seasons. Because, look, I think Devin Booker's great. I really do. I think he's a great offensive player. But do I think he's a superstar? Nah, bro. He ain't that dude that's like, oh, yeah, bro. He, he going to lead y'all to a lot of victories. Because what the hell was he doing before Chris Paul got there? None. This that, story. Team, that wasn't no winning team. You just getting <laughs> yeah. buckets. And look, and look, Flip Murray got buckets in the league. Getting buckets isn't something that's going to make me be like, you a superstar. Never will be. You got to you gotta affect winning in order for me to do that. So I'm going to bounce it right back at you, Mace. Do you believe in this Phoenix Suns team, especially with all the reports that are now coming out, the saying that they probably going to lose this man eight in the offseason? Um, no. Um, I think the team – the team has has reached their pinnacle as they're currently constructed. Like I said, losing Aiden is not how you want to reconstruct the team. But um, it's time that they have to make some wholesale changes to the core of that team to get over the hump. And like you said, um, at this point, Chris Paul cannot be counted on as a scoring option for you. Um, Nobody, I mean, Pat Beverly clown ass want to get there and, and talk about a, a 37, 38-year-old dude not being able to guard anybody. But who can guard somebody in their 20s when hey, their knees I, don't work anymore? Here, here's what bothers me about that. Pat Bev, you don't really guard nobody, dog. Like, and you know, I take up for dudes from the shot town right? Pat Bev, I appreciate you being from the shot making the league. But my boy, I be watching you get dropped off. Russell Westbrook said it years ago. Pat Bev be having y'all fooled. That man, he better stop like he out there putting the clamps on people. Stop that, Pat Bev. You be out there flopping and shit all the time, too. So please, miss me. Miss me, Mr. Pat Bev. You're so, just a hater to your core. Pat Bev, you know who Pat Bev is? If you, Chris Paul, Daryl Pat Bev, okay? Yeah, hater to the <laughs> core. <laughs> But yeah, I know Daryl was over there watching him like, yeah, Pat, you tell the truth about that, brother. You tell the truth. <laughs> but, but I think I think that's so weird to sit there and, and, and talk about the defensive efficiencies of a, what, 16-year veteran at this point? Mm -hmm. uh, however long Chris Paul's been in the league? It's what? The, he, he, my issue isn't even so much with his defense. This is where I take issue. Okay, let's just go back to this series against Dallas. You have five, let, let's see here, your, your one night you have 19, 28. Then you fall off the fucking cliff. Five, seven, 13, 10. You cannot win with a guy taking up that much of your salary cap, that much of your ball handling duties, um, that much of your shot clock every possession. You cannot have a guy that is doing all of that give you numbers like that. You can't. You cannot do that. Look, I'm going to say it straight on. They made the mistake. They should have kept playing Aiton in game in the last two series, uh, last two games of that series instead of trying to ride Chris Paul. Chris, go sit your ass down. We're going to put in one of these young dudes so we can try and push some tempo on them. But they didn't do that. They tried to ride it out, and now they got DeAndre Aiton ready to be like, I'm going to holler out. That would be, be the, the prize of the offseason if that's the case because um... – Aiden goes anywhere and he makes that, that team markedly better. So. And, and look, I, I know some people want to knock them and be like, oh, they should have drafted Luca in that draft. You have to remember at that time they already had Devin Booker. Luca does not make sense for that team. At that time, they were still trying to make Devin, Devin Booker 
be their primary ball handler. It does not make sense to then bring in Luca as your as your primary player. It doesn't. So you can't knock him from Aiden, especially because Aiden's been a very good player. The, the the thing that gets me when people when look at hindsight on um, drafts and stuff, you I mean you have to you have to take into context who's already on the team. You can't sit there three years later and be like, oh, they should have drafted so and so. But like like you said, it doesn't make sense. Luca and Devin Booker on the team doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. You you can't. This is you know just going back to makes if people that have that mentality. It's they're viewing it in the prism of video games. They kind of GM like Daryl Morey does, right? Which is, well, on paper, this should work. But then they forget about this whole thing, which is the people. That, that For all the faults of Daryl Morey, right? well, for all the plaudits that we give him, all the patting him on the back, talking about how great he is, the one core thing that he still does not seem to understand is Yes, you need star players, but they got to fucking like each other. They have to fit together. What they do on the court has to work together. You can't just say, well, we got this guy, this amount of points per game, this guy, this amount of points per game, and so we should score this. No, it's not how it works. A style like Lucas, where he dominates the basketball, needs a lot of the shot clock, that doesn't work for everybody. It doesn't. Like you, 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 if you're a star player who wants the ball, playing with a guy like Luca is not ideal. It's not. No. If you want to talk about it, if we, we can talk about it because Luca's style is like LeBron's. So let's talk about when LeBron went and played with another star. Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosch both had to step back from how much they were used to getting the ball because their best option was LeBron James. That's and they understood game. that, and they understood that, and that that's what makes those Miami. That's what makes that so unique. Like a lot of people try to put stars together, but I mean, if somebody is not willing to take a step back, not gonna work. Somebody's got to. Plain and simple. Chemistry is key. Yep. Always. It's a team sport. It's not I sport. I get like as 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 much as people give. LeBron crap for the whole super teams and stuff. There was always a star that got there that took a step back. I mean, hell, look at Kevin Love's numbers in Minnesota. And then he goes and then he goes to Cleveland and he's a rebounder and a spot up shooter. Yep. Look, man, and one of the clear championships ident- out of it. So I mean one of the follow- clear identifiers to me on whether a guy's ever gonna work with another star player, go look at their usage rate. Your usage rate will tell you a lot about how efficient a guy actually is, right? Because if you have a super high usage rate and you're not shooting like 50%, you ain't really that tight. And, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that got super high usages that aren't really producing in the way that they should. Because, they, you know, whether it's from bad management, you know, um, they just haven't brought in the right pieces or you have the right pieces, but the stars just haven't aligned yet. You know, it is what it is, but there's some play- people out there that if you look at your usage rate, you should, you'd be like, you better do better. So and so speak- what is – oh, well, before before we before we get to that, because, you know, I'm about to spice this bad boy up. What does, what does Phoenix do in the offseason to get their team over the hump or, or get back to the NBA Finals? Because, I mean, let, let's just talk under the premise that they keep Aiden. But, you know, something has to happen to that team. Where, where did you they find go? Some, like, you got to fleece they... somebody into taking Chris Paul and not have a fall off. You got to fleece somebody. You got to find a way to get a young player in there that can get you buckets and that will play some defense for you. Other than that, I mean, the way the do? team the way the team is constituted, it's a it's a solid team. You have guys that can come off the bench and produce for you. Um. Michael Bridges hasn't missed a basketball game in like seven years. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to see what they can do if they get a, like you said, Chris Paul is the only movable piece that makes sense for Phoenix if they want to maintain the level that they're at. But um, I don't think that would be the case. It'll be somebody else on the chopping block besides Chris Paul. Because I don't think at this point anybody's going to take Chris Paul. 
So. Fair enough. Well, you fucked up my intro, so now I got to do another one. But each and every week, ladies and gentlemen, I had it set up, you bastard. Next time, just get out the way. Lay out. <laughs> fuck Chris Paul. Talk about Chris. What the fucking son's going to do? We just talked about that. You're going to ask me again. You fucked up my intro. <laughs> but each and every week, ladies and gentlemen, we take a trip deep into the mind of a madman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mace's Madness. At this point, man, I, I just have the lights went red, people. Y'all, y'all, the the ammo that I have every week, like I be trying to find stuff to talk about, but these motherfuckers is making it way too easy. I, I don't want to be that guy, but y'all make me be this guy. Y'all make me, y'all make me turn the red lights on. So how in the hell can you force? Women to have babies, but you don't want to feed the MFs when they get here. Somebody explain to me how you can force, let me say this, say this slow for y'all. How can you force a woman to have a child and then not supply them with food so they can actually raise their child? Come on, man. Come on, man. Not a single Republican voted to give aid. We gonna I'm a, I'm air quoting this for y'all listening. Give aid to these companies um, supplying America with baby food or money so they can manufacture more baby food, which is a bunch of BS. But we ain't gonna get into that right now. We ain't, we ain't gonna talk about people's pockets. We talking about the people making the decisions. I, it just, ah, man, I try to be, I mean, I, I promise y'all, bro, I'll be trying to come up with other things to talk about, but the way this political climate is going, man, it's, it's somebody, something needs to be said at all times because they'll mess around and let this stuff slip through the cracks. Well, I ain't, I'm gonna let y'all know, every single one of these Republicans out here are fooling y'all. By making you think that they care about you and shit. How do you care about somebody when you don't want to feed them? I mean, it's um, I can't break it down any more simple than that. How can you care about somebody if you don't want to feed them? I mean, we can talk about the gas price gouging and all that. But how can you care about somebody if you don't want to feed them? These are the American people that you you just like, nah, y'all can figure it out. Just keep voting for us, though. We got y'all. Ain't no way. Ain't no fucking way that this is real life right now in 2022 that we have to sit here and what? Because I mean, these votes are public. This, this is public knowledge. We know how they vote every single time. We know how the votes turn out. We know who voted, who didn't, who voted yes, who voted no, who just decided not to vote altogether, who didn't show up. We know we have all of this. Each one of these representatives that y'all vote for told y'all, go fend for yourself. We ain't going to feed you, but we want you to vote because we're better than the other guy. Make it make sense because ain't no way. Ain't no way. I just I don't I don't get it, man. Like I said, bro, vote how you gonna vote. Just vote for the motherfucker that's not a piece of shit. I, I'm I'm not sitting here trying to tell everybody to be a Democrat because that just might not be your cup of tea. Cool, but don't vote for the asshole. Don't vote for the dude that's in jail. Don't vote for the dude that one that's that's forcing you to have children that don't that don't want you to feed the children. Don't vote for the dude who has stocks in gas companies in, in Exxon and shit and, and allowing them to price gouge you. Don't vote for those jackasses. Find somebody with at least a, a moral compass that's pointing kind of in the right direction. Min bare minimum shit. 
ain't no way. I just, I don't, I don't get it at this point. Like I said, it's 2022. We know who these people are. We've seen, well, I mean, we've seen these people do this time and time again, but yet they're still the right, the right option for you. It don't make no fucking sense. I'm gonna say it again. They forcing you to have children, but they don't want you to feed them. I, I just don't, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't understand. Look, George Carlin said it years ago. They're all about the fetus, but as far as the child, fuck them. Okay. Well, I mean, it it, it makes sense because he's. My, I mean, fetuses don't demand anything from them. Fetuses don't look at them and be like, "You're a piece of shit human being. You need to change." Fetuses don't want no money from you. Fetuses can't vote you out of office. Fetuses can't find out that you're a piece of shit and eventually vote you out of office. I mean, it's. They chose they chose the battle that they know is the easiest for them to win because fetuses can't challenge them on anything. You don't see we don't see them doing anything to help children in foster care. We don't see them doing anything to help homeless people, help veterans, help anybody out that's work that that can contribute to the world as it's presently constituted, but yet they the fetus is where they draw the line at. The fetus is their line in the sand. Like you're gonna have that fucking baby. I don't know what you're gonna do with it, but you're gonna have the ain't no way. I can't, I can't. Look, the ITC brand has told you guys for years. This goes back to when me and Terrell were first just doing the show on the air, and I first started the second of Spanish shenanigans. We told you guys then they were trying to strip away. The rights that you have that are protected. They wanted to do this for the longest. This has been a battle that has been going on over 30 years. This is why I implore everybody to go and vote because, plain out and simple, the reason this is happening is because people did not go out and vote when they should have. Because if the Republicans never had control of the Senate in the way that they did, they could not have blocked Obama's Supreme Court justice for over a year. OK, they couldn't have done that. They wouldn't have then been able to fill two seats on the Supreme Court. And then on top of that, Donald Trump would have never been the damn president and they would have got to fill zero seats on the court. Because if you know anything about this, they did not put qualified judges on. They just put the judges on that will do their bidding and that have sworn to doing their bidding. And that's exactly what Kavanaugh and, the, and that crazy bitch, I forget her name. That's exactly Tony Barrett. I think. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Barrett. Crazy ass Barrett. That's exactly what Think they about it. And promised people, they were and people, do. These motherfuckers have a solid 30 to 40 years in that seat. Mm -hmm. and, and unqualified. Like, uh, imagine, we're going to break this down. So imagine going to a mechanic that ain't ever even seen the inside of, and that ain't, don't even know what the fucking engine looks like. Imagine going to that mechanic and expecting him to do a good job on your vehicle. Hope, hope. That's who. That's who we. That's who the hope. last two justices we have. They're the mechanic that don't even. That can't even fix a car. That's 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 how that's how we equate these two people. They're the mechanics yeah. that can't fix the fucking car. They're the Imagine. mechanic you go to. That that you have your story to go tell the other mechanic that can actually fix some shit. Like that jackass didn't do nothing. Should have came to me first. Well, I mean, we're, we're kind of we're shit out of luck at this point because their seat's permanent and they are fairly young for Supreme Court justices. So congratulations. You played yourself and you played everybody else. America's built on hope, not luck. Hope. No, nah, I mean, hope. America's built on niggas. How are we going to say it? America's built on a lot of things, but uh, hope, hope ain't really one. Yeah, hope ain't one. <laughs> America's Very. built on is built on, on on niggas and free labor. <sighs> Facts, <laughs> Facts. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, was another trip into the mind of a madman. This was Mace's madness. We tell you each and every time we talk about these things, ladies and gentlemen. 
make sure you take your ass out and vote in all your elections. I know you've been hearing it from me personally for years. I know you're probably getting tired of hearing it out of my mouth and I'm getting tired of fucking saying it, but go out and vote in all your elections, including your state and local elections. That shit is out of control right now because people stopped voting in all these elections. Now we have to do a major course correction and it's going to take some time. We're going to see, look, y'all think this uh, abortion ban shit is crazy. Y'all just seeing the start of it. Because now that they didn't figure out that they can, that they Supreme Court would legitimately hold them down on everything they said they was going to. Oh yeah, y'all. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it insanity. starts with the it starts with the abortion, and it's gonna roll right back over to the niggas. Oh 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 yeah. <laughs> oh 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 oh. Let me let, let me tell you. Let me tell you. If you are not white in this country, it's about to get real spicy in this motherfucker. Them laws gonna be changing real quick, and you gonna then, be like, like I said, if, if they can, if 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 they can take out women as a whole, and no other entity in a, no other racial or ethnic entity in America can stand up to them because women are across all fucking spectrum. So I mean, hey, mm -hmm. if they can take them out, everybody else is just fucking barbecue chicken. Ladies, we're gonna tell y'all again before we move on here. I'm gonna leave y'all with this. They want your ass barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen, making the old husband a meal. And if that meal ain't right, they believe he should be able to go upside your head and there is nothing you can do about it. That is what they want. When they talk about make America great again, they talking about make it great for the white man again, not everybody else. Because let me tell you something, whenever all those times that they refer to as America being great, it was great for the white man then, not everybody else. So regardless, we got to keep it moving, though, because this week we had a monumental moment happen here. As the bloodline took care of business against Daryl's guys, RK bro, and what? became the first <laughs> undisputed WWE Tag Team Champions of the World. And once, Daryl, how do you what, feel about this? What is your problem, Griffin? Everybody, the opposite of what you don't like to me. <laughs> what is going <laughs> on here? <laughs> we are not doing this. No, no. Be on the <laughs> same team and call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was rooting for no Riddle and Randy Orton as a tag team over here. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Boy, next you're gonna next you're gonna say I'm no, I'm not even gonna go there. Nope, I'm not, I'm not, nope, I'm not going there with you. Nope, just keep it on the same thing. I congratulate the Usos being unified tag team champions. Hurrah, hurrah! They've been teasing us for weeks now. Hurrah, hurrah! They finally got it done. Thank you, WWE. Thank you, Vince, for actually stop teasing things and letting things happen. Thank you. But now we're going to go to you rewarding bad behavior. Let's go with Sasha and Naomi. Let's go. <laughs> hey, rewarding bad behavior. Okay, so let, let's have this conversation, fam. Let, let's do this then. Rewarding bad behavior. Oh, oh, word. Okay. So you mean like Randy Orton embarrassing several of his of his opponents on TV by calling out when they fucked up spots? You mean like that bad behavior that got rewarded for years by WWE? You mean like that? You know, you know the differences. You know the differences between Randy Orton and Sasha and Naomi. Randy Orton's a white man, yes. And yes, championships very... and championships. Oh, word, word. <laughs> what, what, what's really the difference? Please, please show me. Please show me the difference between him and Sasha in, in their championships. Randy's more marketable. Oh. Oh, word? Word? He's more marketable. The same character for fucking 15 years is more marketable than characters who are selling your merchandise for you left and right. And, and, botch, and botch list. How about that? And botch list. All I'm saying, Randy Orton is the new age edge. I don't what's see edge any. Now? And what's, what's edge now then? 
hanging on by a thread. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like it. At least I like it. I he's it. he's literally standing on the edge. Let's, let's talk. I mean, Randy Orton was the character that they put in place to take over Edge's role as being a jackass. He's doing a good job at it too. I mean, hey, it's easy to be a jackass when you're actually a jackass. Yeah, some people fail at that job too. I'm just saying. Some people do, but like and Randy Orton, he he's a jackass and he plays his jackassness well. No complaints. So Daryl, no. so Daryl, you you think that both of those women have been being booked appropriately? You think so? First off, let's get this straight. They survived how many? No, 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 no. Because that's that's a little vague. They survived all those Amazing. cuts. Yeah, they they survived all those releases by the WWE, right? Sasha already had her tangent and took a hiatus before the same way. The same way she did. She got lucky, came back, got a push. Now that you're going to complain again. And then walk out and vacate the titles. If I'm if if you telling me I have to lose to Ronda Rousey, I'm walking out too. Well, let me well, let me ask you this, Daryl. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Why don't you feel that same way about Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels then? Stone Cold walked out. But why, but I don't never hear you knock him for it. I don't never hear you criticize they not him active. for it. They not active, and there were different. He did it when he was active. Man, there's different politics back then. Shawn times. Michaels did it when he was active. What, but you're comparing. You're comparing politics? two times. You're you're doing. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You're doing what two are the politics? Times. What, are, what are the politics then? What are the politics to make it different? You're telling me Sasha Banks was at the same peak as both of them? I'm asking you, what are the politics that make it different? They had they had different politics. There are different pushes. They were they were at a higher peak than less. You're comparing Sasha Banks to Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels. How crazy is that right now? Okay, so let me ask you this, Daryl. In the past 10 years, who are the best women's wrestlers in the, in the business? In the last what? In the last 10 years, who are the best women's wrestlers in the business? Bet you you can't get three deep without saying Sasha Banks is in that top three. So what the fuck are we talking about? Years, That's why 10, I'm comparing you, you them said to 10 them. years? 10 years? Yes. So come on, give me somebody. Come 2012, on. you got Lita, you got Trish. <laughs> no, neither of them were. Uh, no, they were not active. You at said ten years. Like you that. said twenty twelve. They were not. They weren't even active at those times like that. At, at that time, at the time that you're talking about, Lita was a fucking valet for Edge. So stop that. Stop it. But her credentials are just knocked off. We're talking about active wrestlers in the past ten years, Daryl. Not motherfuckers that were valets or part timers. Active wrestlers. Lita was a part time wrestler in twenty twelve. You're saying oh, that she really? Wasn't, she wasn't okay, full-time. Okay. She was a valet. Was Beth active at 2012? Beth Phoenix? Okay, there's one. Okay. Um, Mickey James? There's two. Um... And Beth Phoenix hasn't even been active for like half of that fucking time that we're talking about, too. So you're lucky I'm giving you that one. So go ahead. This is ruthless aggression. Stop. We're going to have to go ruthless aggression. You said 12, 2012. So next one would be Victoria. You, you think Victoria is one of the best? See, look at the lie in his face. Look at this. This thing is just saying shit. No, you said active, though. Mind, you're saying active, though. Mind, he knows in his mind so right this now. Is, this he's is just why I have to disagree. Banks. Because he had this to is go, why oh, I have let me to see who I can name who's been active. This is Maybe. what I have to this is why I have to disagree with you because you're gonna compare Sasha Banks to established and to their peak wrestlers. Sasha had been having temp uh, like a temper, she don't like her booking. Okay. Can she go somewhere else and get the same same thing? That's all I need to know. Can Naomi and Sasha Banks go to another wrestling company and get the same thing? The same thing is what? Define what's the same thing. Like a higher push, like top push. Like if Mickey James left WWE, she can go to Impact and be good. If John Morrison can get a push going into AEW, I bet no, you, he, hey. What are you talking about? He took an L. Hey, hey, guess what? Do you really think they're going to keep him catching L's? Do you think so? Do you really believe that? Yes, like Keith Lee. I think I, y'all, are, y'all are missing the elephant in the room here. Given, 
Um, Ronda Rousey's performance at WrestleMania, I, I think it's justified to walk out if that's the person you tell me I have to lose to. And again, Daryl, I'm asking you, have they, because you've avoided this question, have they properly been booked? You fucking ducked and dodged it, but you don't want to admit because we've talked about it previously. And I just want to see if you're willing to flip flop on your answer because your answer previously, it tells me exactly that I know you're full of shit right now because you know they've been booked horribly. So go ahead, Daryl. Daryl, tell us, have they been booked well? Booked well for the tag team titles? Or push have are they been booked, booked well, well for being serious Period. competitors. Period. Which one you want to pick? Period. Take the singles. No, no, no. Period. Singles. You can something. you can combine all of it. No, together. because they, they, they had been... they've been they've been high they've been the starlight stars for the tag team titles. Are they not? They've been happy. They booked a good tag team. They got pushed as a tag team, and then at the after the WrestleMania plans, now they want to split up and have them for a WWE title push. Knowing that they're going to lose, knowing in the right, and they're going to lose. One's going to lose to Bianca, and one's going to lose to freaking Ronda. And so you would, so if you were Sasha Banks and Naomi, who are certified way better wrestlers than Ronda Rousey, you're going to just swallow that pill and be like, "Yeah, I'm cool with it." You should know the deal already. Well, Damn that's the not deal. what I asked you. That's not what I asked you, Daryl. Are if you were them, are you just going to be like, "Yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna ride with this"? Okay. I will. I'll. Here it goes. This is what you want me to do. I accept that their booking is bad, but are you going to tell me also were they good champions when they had the belt? Sasha, when when has she ever been bad as a champion? Please tell me when she had a bad run because that run with her, uh, and the Bianca back and forth title glorious. changes between Charlotte and Charlotte and her. And whose fault is that? Was it was that Sasha Banks' fault or was that fact that they kept wanting to build up Charlotte Flair having more title runs? What was the cause of that problem, Daryl? What her was the Bailey? bad booking part of that? Hmm? Her and Bailey? Her and Bailey? You're going to tell me that was a bad feud. You're going to legitimately try and argue to me that one of the best feuds the WWE's had over the past three years How many was times a bad that feud? feud happened? How many times that feud happened? Be honest. Yeah, that's because you watched that pretend show NXT. But for the rest of us, that was... That, that wasn't was NXT. Some... That had nothing to do with NXT. It happened huh? Raw and SmackDown. What are you talking about? The same feud happened both times. Yeah, what are you but, talking about? But my point, my point to you is this. Where it happened, majority of that, where it happened, because it happened once on Raw, once on SmackDown, right? Where they where they went at each other. Their other rivalry stuff that you're thinking of was all NXT. No, the last time with the tag team titles. What happened with the last time she had the tag team titles? The tag you're team forgetting about that? Yeah, she had the tag team titles with Bailey. What happened again? The same thing, right? Another hiatus. You're forgetting about that, right? No. That was before. Again, I'm going to ask you one more time. You, you Has WWE rewarded. been booking okay. people appropriately? Have they booked them appropriately? Yes or no? They're, they're working on it. They're bad, but they're working so, on so, it. So, so if they're saying if you're saying they're bad and they're working on it, that means the answer is clearly no. Then that means if I'm looking at someone in an industry right now that currently has other options, no, to no, go no. to stay wait, in the that currently division. has other options. Hold on, hold on. no, that stay ha in the currently has division. other options. They can simply say. Well, fuck it. You don't want to book me well. I'm cool. I'm out. Okay, but stick to only to the women's division. Has the women's division sent on Raw or SmackDown? You're telling me no one else in that division has been booked. Everyone has been booked bad. Let, let me try and think of someone who's had good booking. Outside Alexa of Bliss? what they've been doing with Charlotte Flair. No, they shit it all over her booking for quite a while. She had to go off TV and come back as a different version. Of but Alexa is her booking Bliss bad her now? To... I'm yeah. saying her booking bad now. I can't. It's too early to make a judgment on that. Is, it's uh, too early. Is Bianca's booking bad? Mm. Given that they were going to have her lose Ronda Rousey, I'm Sorry. I'd say her booking has improved, but it's still not good. Uh, is either bad or good? I, if I had to judge bad or good, I'd say bad. Okay, so next women. Oscar, booking bad or good? They finally actually did something good with her, with her and Becky Lynch. That's a good booking. They can put together very high-quality matches. We've seen it before. 
Does this have anything to do with biases in this situation? Biases to who? Anybody. I said, do you have a bias with anybody with the booking? No. My my the, look, their booking has been so bad for their women, specifically based off of one primary reason that they continue to try and focus it around Charlotte Flair. And then now they're trying to do it with Ronda Rousey. The shit gets old and stale very quickly, especially with someone like Ronda. At least I can fall back on Charlotte and say she's had some good matches, right? She's had some really great matches, especially with um with Sasha, right? I can fall back and say that. When the fuck can I fall back and say that about Ronda Rousey? But yet she's walking around supposed to be the baddest woman in WWE right now when Ronda she's not even a wrestle. respectable wrestler. Ronda can't, can't wrestle. Handle a match. We we know this. Ronda has the belt because of what? Star power, right? Okay, but but damn that, on if, seats. if I if I'm if I'm wrestling out there wrestling my ass off and you tell me I have to lose to somebody that can't fucking wrestle, I'm gonna take that as as a slap in the face from all the hard work that I've put in to be a fucking to be to be who I am, to be the person that I am out there in the ring. So like, at the end of the day, I can't I can't fault walking away or vacating your title if you're telling me that that I have to lose to somebody that can't do the job half as good as I can. I mean it, it's it's why I mean you you let's look at every other industry let's just say you're you and somebody else are are you're considered for you feel like you've done everything you can to get a promotion and then they give it to somebody else who's who you feel is half as qualified as you more than likely you're going to leave that place and find somebody that values you how you feel you should be valued so this is just another case in that like i'm, I'm sorry bro like i'm i'm not going to be okay with losing my title to a motherfucker that can't wrestle but they're not losing a title they're not losing but wait, no wait, title. Wait. but wait wait let me ask you this though they've had to become a tag team in order to get any proper booking daryl you know that's a bad sign when you have to form a tag team to get proper any type of proper booking that's an awful sign bro when when your booking is so bad that the fans are legitimately apathetic to what you're booking with ronda rousey you can't sit here and then tell me that I oh I should be upset at these ladies that they were like, you know what, dog? I done rolled out this bad booking stuff with WWE for years. I'm cool, bro. I'm cool. I'm not gonna so, knock somebody. So it was a good decision that they're SmackDown stars. Let's get let's get this at. They're on the SmackDown roster. They're not on Raw. Who on SmackDown is a push for the women's division right now? Who? Who can get a push on SmackDown? No, who 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 is like absolute? I just want to see them wrestle SmackDown on the on SmackDown. Who in the women's division? Who? Be because Bianca. you got Bianca is not is Bianca's on Raw. Is she on Raw now? Oh well, yep. then you're stuck. Then you're leaving me with very few choices. Bailey's that injured. Means, Bailey's that, injured. That means hey. But that doesn't mean I get what you're getting at. But that doesn't mean you have to push Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey down my throat. That doesn't mean that. Well, Charlotte's gone. She's gone for a while. She's not. Yeah, gone. yeah, yeah. And guess what's gonna happen as soon as she comes back, Daryl? Can you can you guess? Because I bet you I can tell you exactly what's gonna happen. She's gonna come back. Woo! And then guess what? Title shot. Boom! She wins again. Flair's the champion again. Okay, but understand though. Like I said on SmackDown, there's nobody. There's nobody to even, hey, even make a decent, good marquee match other than probably putting Charlotte against Ronda Rousey. The reason why it is that case is because you're using Ronda Rousey. It isn't because of the other women that are on SmackDown that they're, they're, they're not talented. It's because you are using a non-wrestler. You are using someone who is not good at the business she is in not my fault it's not her I, I, fault I'm either not, I'm it's not, not her you. fault either it's I'm not, not her fault either her. i'm not it's blaming not, her but i'm saying just strictly for name power sasha would be the name power for that match everybody knows the end result if it was ronda rousey versus like 
you can go out on the street right now and people know who Ronda Rousey is. If yeah, there's, like there's you're you're no gonna watch because it's, Ra- Banks, so. it's Ronda, but to make it feel like it's semi competitive, put Sasha in there. If I'm right? if I'm the if I'm the women in in wrestling right now, I'm demanding that Ronda learns how to fucking wrestle before I want to be in the ring with her because it's it's. We all saw that. We all saw her WrestleMania, man. We've all seen her matches before then. She can't fucking wrestle. It's ridiculous. You sh- it's like watching Britt Baker. Put Britt Baker think, and Ronda Rousey together. That's the, that's the cool it, match. Remember, remember when she had to get carried through her championship match at WrestleMania? Not the last one, but the remember the one threat. before that? You the remember how threat. she had to get carried through that match? horribly and it was still just as heavy as a carry as her next wrestlemania match come on baby look if i'm sasha banks naomi who both know they get fans responses they both are better wrestlers i would be fuming every day that i had to watch a motherfucker who hasn't even put the time in who if you remember correctly when they left talk shit about the entire business and the fans I have to now bow down to this bum? I have to bow down and let this bum be the champ? Come on, man. Okay, let, let's have a this. Let's, I agree everything. What, let's say this. I agree to everything you say about Sasha, but what's Naomi's reason? How many times has Naomi got shit on? She's gotten properly pushed like once, bro. Like one time in all the years she's been there. You got to remember, we, we've we been fucking with Naomi since back when she was a funkadactyl, bro. And they've given her one proper push since then. What has she got to be mad about? Right there. Lose to Bianca? Hey, at least you relevant. At least you out here in the main matches. At least you getting shine. She she don't want that? Hey, hey, look, look. She could lose to Bianca. And guess what? It would still be cool. But guess what? That's not who they have the issue with. And you know this. Mace keeps pointing it out to you, nigga. If I had to just sit back as a wrestler and watch another mo- who can't even wrestle be the chick, like, think okay, here no, we go. No, no, I got no. you, no, no, I got you right here, Daryl. Think about how all the wrestlers felt about, about Bill Goldberg, the guys who were clearly better wrestlers than him all that time, and think about the push he got, and then how many guys they shitted on during throughout that push. You would you think all them guys was just like, yeah, Bill. Yeah, WCW, good job. You think we, that's what it was? We know when Goldberg shit on Kevin Owens. We know when Goldberg shit on a bunch of people. I understand that. But who was Goldberg? A dude that they built up. He wasn't actually a good wrestler. He didn't even have to prove himself as a wrestler like all these other people. That's my I'm point ta- to you. I'm, take, I'm taking the aspect. Didn't have to prove I'm himself. taking the aspect out as a fan. I'm taking the aspect out of it of a fan. I'm talking about as like straight up name in the industry. Bill Goldberg was nobody before they gave him that push. Ronda, how? Okay, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Ronda Rousey. Yes, she's a no name in in the common lexicon, right? But let me ask you this. How many pop culture things have you seen her in since she got her ass whooped by Amanda Nunes in the UFC? How many? Can you tell me? Yeah. Mace, do you remember seeing her in any pop culture shit, really, after she got her ass whooped? No. So she, at that point, for all intents and purposes, wasn't really a name that was value. She was just a name. You can build up names in wrestling. That's what you're supposed to be doing. But how you think they're trying to build up Ronda Rousey? Well, she, can't, she can't do her job. Make her wrestle first. They The biggest mistake that they ever made with her was they should have had her on NXT for at least a year. Learn how to wrestle. Learn oh, how to perform in front of a shit crowd. On, we shit on week. trash cans? Oh, no. That, that wouldn't work. Nine, uh, you, listen, listen. If okay. we're being honest, there is at least, at least... Three women that have came from NXT that she could have worked with at that time, including Liv Morgan, that are better wrestlers than her. Gonna put Sasha Baylor. Uh, I just don't uh, see how you're in the business of wrestling and you're trying to. She can't fucking wrestle, and it's obvious she can't wrestle. It's not. It's not. At that point, like I said, when we bring go back to the Goldberg stuff, you can you can look past it. 
But with Ronda, that means she, it's obvious she can't wrestle. I mean, she's what what has she done in a ring that just leads you to believe that she's good at her job besides not breaking her neck when she falls? Nothing. I could, I, could, I could believe that. That's the thing. And, Nothing. I, 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 I believe I actually agree with y'all with Ronda. Ronda's 100 percent agreeable. I'm not disputing that. I'm disputing the fact of you can get you can go out, you can get mad at the booking all you want. Everybody should be freaking walking out if that's the case for all the booking. Okay, let me ask you this then. How long should they have waited then for WWE to fix their booking? Let me ask you this. Knowing that both of them have been in the business for quite a while and been working for WWE for quite a while, how long in your mind should they have waited for them to correct the booking then? There's no time period. Too many, too many things. So, so, so what you're saying that so now what you're saying is live on a prayer and hope to God that Vince McMahon pulls his head firmly out of his ass. That's what you're saying. Well, well, Vince gave Sasha the first time when she first walked out. She had the choice to leave or not. They explained that, didn't they? Not you know what WWE is. You seen the booking at that time. That was bad around that time too. You gave it another shot. Now you said before you even get on air, things are already playing. It'd been different. It was a different, different situation like the last time. But this time is literally like you're doing it right before you freaking get on air. Okay. It, let me ask you this. Let me, let me ask you this. What if Vince promised her that the booking was going to get better and that they wouldn't shit on her again for another person like Ronda Rousey? What if that was promised, Daryl? Does that change anything for you? I don't think so. But they were still tag team champions. They weren't losing their belts. That's the problem. They were just going split and do singles. They weren't losing their belts. That was the problem. <laughs> That's the whole thing. They're just getting split. And they go into two different title matches. They weren't losing belts. Bro, do you do you not well, know that you not is technically jaded? losing your belt, bro? That that that's losing. You know, once they would break the team up and send them in opposite directions, you know what would happen. Because guess what? Guess what? We know they're not going to make Ronda lose. We know they're, they're. We know that's not happening. And after and with how they're trying to build up Bianca, they're not going to have Bianca lose right now. So now you're dropping your titles to now go and put somebody else over again. And one of them who's not even a fucking wrestler? Come on, bro. Come okay, on, so man. let's let's go to let's go uh pay-per-views out. They lose the titles, the booking's bad, they lose the both of them lose to the champions. What do they do at money in the bank? Then you're putting both of them in money in the bank, and and you're probably still not getting a victory for either one of them. It's probably gonna still go to someone like Liv Morgan. But the, they change the point, they change they changed the rules for the money in the bank, though. The rules of the money in the bank now is they don't cash in until WrestleMania. So they have a guaranteed main event at WrestleMania. That's what they literally are doing. So that's the thing. Cody probably win his money in the bank. Wait till WrestleMania to face Roman. Women, same thing. They have a guaranteed shot, but it messes up the whole Wrestle, uh, Royal Rumble factor. Well, to me, to be honest with you, I don't see that sticking. Because I know, I, I, like, that is a very dumb change, and you're right. It would mess up the, the whole Royal Rumble concept, right? It's just absurd. But I don't see that as a change that's going to stick. I see that as one of those that they're trying to just hype up, get people to come watch money, this Money in the Bank match more, and then all of a sudden the person's going to be like, I want my shot now. I'll cash it in right now. I don't need to wait till WrestleMania. You know how WWE works, man. But Liv Morgan's in a whole – fake bullet club thing in WWE right now. So, mm -hmm. so she would be out the picture. So is Liv Morgan has good booking? Hold up. Um, I'd say they, I, I would judge her booking as fair. Same with, considering same with uh, Ripley too. They both have gotten pretty fair booking. I, I don't want to say it's been bad. But I think what they're doing with both of them at this point is fair. It works for both of their characters. Um, how it plays out long term, I think it has more of an effect for Rhea Ripley on the positive than it does for Liv Morgan. Because, again, a lot of people are going to feel like you did, which is like, oh, here we go, another fucking bullet club, right? So there's going to be a bunch of people that feel like that. 
Um, so I think it works out better long term for Rio Ripley. But when you got to think, the reason why I say both of those are the work for them is because at least they're getting a valid storyline now that isn't just I got to carry Ronda Rousey on my back and try and act like this bitch can wrestle when she can't. Because I, I say the booking has been bad because they've been dealing with Baszler and freaking Natalia for how how many weeks for a tag team title. Mm-hmm. Bad. I, I understand. Like you're sick sick of looking at that match. That match is not even pay per view, and it was on a pay per view. It's like it's bad. So I understand their booking has been bad. I get that their frustrations and promises and all those stuff behind the scenes are bad, but. The walkout is it just is it does it do anything for you? That's the problem. All it did is get you suspended. So what does the suspension do? Give you a couple days off and stuff. And what do you? I don't do? know. We'll see. Because what happens if we? What if they both only have a year left on their deal? Well, they, they said Naomi. They said Naomi's contract is expiring. So for Naomi, it's like, well, I can do so. So. I'm just saying. I'm just, look. I'm just saying, bro. At, at some point, I can't get mad at the wrestlers for reacting to how poorly WWE has been doing their job for you, like an extended amount of time, right? I can't get mad at them, especially when you're looking at the industry now, and that you have actual other alternatives to go to that are responsive to the fans, right? In the sense of, hey. When the fans hear their name, they react positively. Because, like, yeah, TNA has been there for forever and a day. But most of the time, when wrestling fans hear the name TNA, they're like, ugh. Okay? But you hear the name AEW, most fans have a positive reaction. You have an option to go to now. You have an and You have an option to go to that you know, hey, you could go over there and potentially be the best women's wrestler that they have. So, Yeah, but she, want, she couldn't carry that name. I think that's trademark. So, I guess she'll go with her. Mercedes, probably go with a real name. Probably, maybe. probably, mm-hmm. probably go with Marce- Mercedes, Mercedes, whoever the fuck she wants to go to, whatever. Mm-hmm. Regardless, though, we know she can play her character, and the copyright isn't on how she plays the character; it's just on the character name. So, again, WWE fucking up isn't going to make me turn and look at the wrestlers who react and be like, "Y'all wrong for reacting that way." No, man, WWE, y'all need to get your shit together. Look, man, you said it yourself, Daryl. Ever since Vince McMahon took over NXT, it went to shit. You and Terrell both have pushed this point down my fucking throat that it has went to shit since McMahon took it over. I only think I look at. I only think I only look at the Uso, uh, Uso's brother over there at, after a while. At this point, I only look at one match. <laughs> Are you seeing what? I, that's what I'm saying, bro. So it's like, hey, so wait, they had a show where they were doing good booking that they could learn from, that they could create characters from, and now they've shitted the bed with that too. So why, as a wrestler, would you have any faith at all that they're not going to continue to shit the bed and misuse you? Oh, wait, I just thought about that. Mandy Rose has better booking than Sasha Banks. Think about that, bro. Mandy (laughs) fucking Rose has better booking. (laughs) How insane is that, bro? How insane? Gets a title and a tag team. Ain't that ain't that something? Do you see <laughs> what I'm saying? Do, do do are you seeing now? You're seeing the light. You're seeing like, well, wait a minute, hold on a second. Mandy Rose does have better booking. Like, huh? I think I would be kind of pissed off too. I forgot. See, this is how much I did. I don't even watch NXT anymore. See, they did it. The, they did it to me. The, <laughs> this is my point to you, though, is that hey. Again, this is why I'm not mad at them. This is why I'm not saying y'all is wrong because, yo, WWE is just fucking off booking after booking after booking. Look, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I'm surprised that they that they didn't fuck off everything that they've done with the bloodline. I'm surprised. I thought for sure at some point they would just be like, let's just make them start losing matches and shit out of nowhere. I thought for sure the bloodline seems to be the only people that they have really gotten their booking right. Them and RK bro, that boogie has been perfect. It's been excellent, awesome. Outside of that, and now I'm hearing rumors that John Cena might be coming back to face Roman again. Like, nigga, no. You know what? Just because of that face <laughs> and that face, John Cena better take John Cena better go ahead and just 
bury Austin Theory. That's what he can do. <laughs> he could go bury that guy. <laughs> I don't want to see no Roman versus Cena too. What? That's stupid. Man, bro, Cena ain't wrestling anytime soon. I don't want to believe that lie. <laughs> he, he, nah, he's got an open schedule for a little bit. He doesn't have any like movies and shit to shoot like coming up in the next couple. Well, in, make in second next season of Peacekeeper and call it a day. <laughs> there, that, from what I understand, if they start that shooting, that's not going to start shooting until sometime next year. Mm. Man, nobody wants to see no John Cena for fit, so for some cheap pops. John Cena, what color he's gonna do? He did green him. What was the last one? It was green and something. We're probably gonna get a magenta and a freaking a white. No, a the only way white. I'm accepting of John Cena face of Roman Reigns again is if he comes back as basic thugonomics, John Cena. If he comes back as basic thugonomics, John Cena, I'm with it. That's I'm like with it. wishing him to be a heel. Stop. <laughs> Look, that's as close as we're gonna get to him being a heel. So if he come back as basic thug and numbers, come back out with the rings, you know what I'm saying? Can I get we might that? Have something. Can I get that NWO John Cena that was facing the fiend? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Maze. Maze has been the same pose. <laughs> he is over here. You know what? Let's have John just have John Cena. And like a, a celebrity NBA player, just wrestle. You know what? We can get stop. Westbrook. Just, we can get stop. Westbrook. You stop it. <laughs> stop it right now. That's how we're going to end up with Shaq versus the Big Show too, nigga. Keep playing around. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he, he said it, mate. It's not me, okay? <laughs> We're done talking about John Cena. <laughs> I mean, I mean, John Cena versus McGregor. <laughs> he just wanted me to end the show, don't he? he that's what he wants. He just wanted me to say it. We're done for the day. <laughs> you must got something to do because the way you talking right now, you, you want to be out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody want to see John Cena wrestle, bro. Stop it. Now we hey, good we on go, that, Brian. We can always hope for Undertaker, you know. <laughs> there he goes. That's how you get him. That's how you get him. <laughs> Respectfully to the Undertaker, Mark Calloway. Hell no, bro. Hell no. Look, I <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I just haven't wanted to see the Undertaker wrestle since they uh crapped away the streak and gave it to Brock Lesnar. I'm gonna just be honest with all, all of y'all out here haven't wanted to see him wrestle since they wasted the streak. Once you wasted the streak, I'm cool. To Brock Lesnar of all people. Hey, the, the only two big stars are the people that be Undertaker at WrestleMania, and that was Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. So why didn't you just give it to Roman Reigns in the first place? He, he wasn't ready. And Brock Lesnar was? Yes. Shut the fuck up. I'm done with you. <laughs> done with this guy. Done with him. We we, oh, we, we, we got to talk about something else at this point because, like I said, he just over here just fueling. <laughs> he just over here fueling the fire. We can't, we can't, we can't let him do this to us. We still have. I'm up to sixty dollars of gas right now. <laughs> we we got it. We have a whole day that that he can't ruin. Not gonna let you and, do this. And on that note, Mace, tell the people where to find you. <laughs> you already know, man. Twitter at uh, funky <laughs> underscore stuff oh nine. Instagram named Dime Summer or catch me at Twitch twitch.tv slash swaggy mace. There on Mr. Logie Low Janitor himself. Go tell the people where to find you. Logie Low Janitor, Twitch. I'm going to, we need a stream. We need, we need some uh, Monopoly. We need some Monopoly for this. We need him to defend that fake title he has. Yes. Yes. That's the only social we need is just Twitch. That's it. We need that happening. 
Hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> you already know where to find me, people. At J Spender Man everywhere. Instagram, Twitch, Twitter. Uh, yeah, all that good stuff. You can find me on Facebook, all that. At J Spender Man. And of course, you will see either my pretty face or the ITC logo. And uh, yes, that is our show for this week, ladies and gentlemen. But I have to just leave you with one kind note. I am your reigning, defending. None of none of that shit matters disputed, right now. But <laughs> champion of the world. None of that matters right now. Oh, I'm yeah. this. You man, <laughs> Jerome fan. Current and reigning, defending, undisputed. Wait, wait, wait. Take the defending out. You haven't defended that for a while. Of the world. <laughs> Man, he's how he's saying defending. He's not defended. <laughs> You're worse than Brock Lesnar for a title shot. <laughs> how? Wait. Acknowledge me. <laughs> Incorrect, sir. It's acknowledge me. <laughs> <laughs>